for. And then uh, we'll be going to 2 Kings chapter 2. Acts chapter 4 and then 2 Kings chapter 2. Now, if you know your Bible, you know that uh, Acts chapter 4, uh, what happens in Acts chapter 4 is what is because of what took place in Acts chapter 3, okay? In Acts chapter 3 is where the lame man is sitting at the gate of the temple, and uh, Peter and John uh, come at the hour of prayer, and this man begins to beg alms from Peter and John. And Peter says to him, he says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says that immediately this man's ankle bones received strength and they find him walking and leaping and praising God. Now, that's what has taken place in Acts chapter 3. Now, read with me in Acts chapter 4. And look at verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they laid hands on them, and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even time. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Skip down to verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. I referenced this last night. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus." But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them, because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old, on whom the miracle of healing was showed. Father, we thank you again for these days that you've given us here in Priceville. We thank you for these folk being so faithful to be in every service. I pray that you'd bless them, Lord, abundantly for their faithfulness. And then, Lord, we thank you, too, how they provided for Barbara and I. Lord, we've enjoyed the good meals every evening with the pastor and his wife. We thank the church for that. It was good fellowship, a good time with them. We pray, God, you'd bless them uh, for that, for their expenditure, for their hospitality. And then, Lord, for the offering. They're very generous folk. I pray you'd bless them. Well, Lord, this is the last night. I pray that you'd help us to finish well. I pray you'd once again give us good liberty. We plead uh, that you'd make the preaching easy. And Lord, as has been prayed many times this week, if there would be one here unsettled, unsaved, 
Lord, would you draw them? Would you do the work necessary? Would you show them that the only hope they have is in the Lord Jesus? I pray every heart be moved and stirred, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I, what I'm looking at here is this, this man who was made whole, this lame man who was made whole, uh, he pictures he pictures all of lost humanity. A uh, man can't walk with God; he's he's undone. He can he can walk physically, but he's he can't walk spiritually. He's lost and undone. Okay, we were as helpless and hopeless as this man sitting at the gate begging alms. Amen. Yeah. This man had to rely on the mercies of others to be kind to him, just for him to exist physically. Well, you and I, for us to uh, exist spiritually, we have to rely on the mercies and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this man, when uh, uh, here in chapter 3, uh, was when he was made whole, it says immediately his ankle bones received strength. That's a very good picture of salvation. Amen. Salvation is not a three-step or four-step or a five-step plan. No, no, no. When the sinner, when, when the sinner turns from his sin and turns from his self-reliance and in simple faith turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, repents of this and turns to the Lord, uh, immediately God saves them and Amen. births them into his family. Amen. So it's a picture of salvation. But now what I want to emphasize here, what we read in chapter 4, is that uh, because of God using Peter and John and these disciples, that uh, all that religious crowd got stirred up against them, Amen. okay? And they're trying to silence uh, these disciples. They're trying to get them to stop. They're trying to get them to quit. Are you with me? Amen. That's what's taking place. They're trying to get these men to stop uh, preaching in the name of Jesus, uh, going about telling the good news, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, pointing sinners to the Lamb of God. They're trying to get them to stop, all right? Well, here, here's what I want to preach on tonight, all right? And that is that there's no stopping place. Amen. There is no stopping place. There's no, it's, it's, it's no time to quit. There's no stopping place. Now, it said there in verse 30, in verse uh, 16 of chapter 4, it talks about a notable miracle had been done. Okay? In other words, this religious crowd could not dispute the fact that God had done something. Amen. Amen. All right? So, since they could not refute it or dispute it, they were trying to silence it, yeah. all right? Now, I want to correlate that in this sense, and that is that God has blessed Priceville Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. You think about what God has given you here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, there's a lot of places that would love to have 10 acres or, is that is it 10 acres? Amen. 10 acres of this, like this property with such a, a beautiful uh, building upon it and uh, the outbuildings and the pavilion. and uh, Hey, uh, uh, the world cannot dispute the fact that God has been good to Priceville Baptist Amen. Church. Amen. Amen. So what they'll do is since they can't dispute what God's done, and, and I'm correlating it in this sense too, Many of you have commented that God has blessed you this week. Okay? Amen. Now, they will not be able to dispute what God's done in your heart this week. Amen. But what they will try to do is they'll try to get you to stop. Amen. You're right. They'll try to get you to quit. One of the sad marks on our nation is that churches are closing. Yeah. We don't need churches to close. 
We need churches to open. Amen. Amen. And part of this COVID-19, uh, it's, it's, it's to oppress the church. That's right. uh, you say, well, that's the government shutting everything down. Well, it, there are higher powers at work, Amen. and those higher powers are using wicked men in high places, and they're trying to stop the work of God. They can't refute it. They can't dispute it. So what they'll try to do is they'll try to stop it. Right. Amen. Right. Now, the pastors mentioned that this was the last night of the meeting, but it doesn't have to be the last night of God moving. Amen. This is the last night that, I'll, that I'm scheduled to be here. Yes. Okay? But that doesn't mean that something can't carry on Amen. from this meeting. Amen. But sadly, sadly, a lot of times it's what happens is folks will say, well, it was good while it lasted. <laughs> Amen, brother. And they'll get you to stop when it ought to be just a starting place and not a Amen. stopping place. Amen. Yeah, I believe the best days for the church are yet ahead of us. Amen. I, I started off Sunday night talking about we're not going down, we're going up. Right. Amen. Amen. The old devil wants to, wants to get us to quit. Uh, he'll get us disheartened. He'll get us dislocated. He, he, he'll he'll want to get us confused. He, he'll try to get us to stop. Amen. Amen. But now here, uh, find, first, find Second Kings while I ramble on here for a minute. It's never the outward opposition that stops the work of God. Amen. Uh, it's, it's never those that are without that stops the work of God. Uh, there's a parable in uh, Amos chapter 5 and verse 19. And it talks about a man who goes for a walk. And he meets a lion and turns from the lion and he meets a bear. And he turns from the bear and he runs back to the safety of his house and shuts the door and leans back on a wall and a serpent from within comes out and bites him and he dies. Yeah. It wasn't the lion without, it wasn't the bear without, it was the serpent within that got him. Amen. And that's what it'll be for the church. Yeah. It's not those outward forces. I, you can look at it as our nation too. Hey, the lion of China is not going to stop us. The bear of Russia is not going to bring us down. If, if our nation falls, it, it'll fall because of the serpents within. Amen. That's good, Amen. You see, too, in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was in that far off land, and he heard, isn't that something about hearing? He'd heard that the walls of Jerusalem were torn down and there was no man burdened to rebuild the walls. Right. Well, you know what happens, what transpires, the king gives him leave and he goes back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. Well, when Nehemiah showed up, not everybody was thrilled. <laughs> hey, man. Sanballat and Tobiah and all those outward forces, uh, there in Nehemiah 4, they began to ridicule uh, the rebuilding of the walls. What do these feeble Jews, what do they think they're going to do? If they do build something, if a fox jumped out on it, it'd fall apart. In essence, that's what, the, I'm not quoting that verse by verse, but that's what it is. They mock the work of God. Well, that's what's going to happen when, uh, I mean, you, you think about it. Uh, hey, God's doing something in Priceville Baptist Church. Amen. And the outward forces are going to think, what do they think they're going to do? Yeah. And they're going to mock what you're trying to do. Amen. But they'll never stop you. They can't stop you. That's right. 
what stopped the wall, the work on the walls for a time there in Nehemiah 4 is that Judah raised up and said, there's too much rubbish so that we're not able to build the walls, rebuild Amen. the walls. And Judah said, Judah's the tribe from which our Lord come. This isn't Tom or Harry or Joel. This is Judah said, there's too much rubbish. Well, I've been enough, you know, around enough construction that, uh, you know, I've helped on some churches and things. I've never done construction work for a living. Uh, I've painted, done some painting to supplement myself. I'm not looking for work, though. And, and uh, but like if, if they're framing, if they're framing, framing in, you'll have odd pieces of lumber. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if they're, if they're running, if they're running wire, they'll, they'll pull enough through to make sure they don't come out short. And then when they do hook up that switch or that plug or the light overhead or whatever, you'll, you'll have strands of wire laying. That's right. If they're running plumbing, I like this new stuff that they come out with. Amen. That bends and uh, that's a whole lot easier. That stuff's a whole lot easier. Yeah. Okay. And, and, but, you know, they'll pull enough through to make sure they've got enough that, and, then, and then when they do have to cut it, you know, there'll be those odd pieces laying. Right. If they're drywalling, you know, to cut in around things. You'll have, you'll have, you getting the thought? Right. I was helping uh, in a church just not long ago in Texas. It was, and, and uh, mo most of what I did was gophering and cleaning. I swear, I, boy, I'd sweep and have to come back and sweep again. And I'd haul stuff out and come back and have to haul more stuff out. But my point is, uh, if there's any work going on, you're going to have these things to, Amen. But don't let it stop the work. Right. Do what you have to do, but don't let it stop the work. Amen. Spiritually, that, that can happen spiritually. Amen. But don't let it stop the work of God. Amen. It's never the outside forces. If, if it stops, it's because of the inward yeah. forces. Amen. Now, here in... Second Kings chapter two. I'm, I don't want to read all this, but if you, if you know your Bible, it's where Elisha knows that his time is coming short. That the Lord's going to take him out. And Elisha is his protege. Elisha is the one that poured water on the hands of the men of God. Okay? And, and Elijah is sharing with Elisha, with Elijah sharing with Elisha, how that uh, God's going to take him out. And in this, they're going to these different places. Okay? Now, these different places, the names of these places have meaning. Amen. Uh, they, they start at Gilgal, and they go to Bethel, then they go to Jericho, and then they come to Jordan. Okay? Now, what, what I'm wanting to point out in this, and I'll reference those places, but, but I want you to look they're at, they're at, uh, the, at Gilgal. Look, look at the end of verse 2. It says, well, let's read verse 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So Elijah says, I'm not stopping. Okay, sometimes there's good intentions by others Amen. that'll try to get you to stop. Yeah. Okay, some of the good brethren will try to get you to stop. Well, uh, Elisha's attitude was, I'm, no, I'm going on, and they went to Bethel. Now, now look at verse 6. Okay, verse 6, they, they leave Bethel and they come to Jericho. In verse 6, says, And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. 
And he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Notice this phrase. And they too went on. Look, look at verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. Notice the phrase. So that they too went over on dry ground. And then look at verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on. I'm, I'm looking at that thought that Elisha had a lot of places he could have quit. Elisha had a lot of opportunities he could have stopped. But you read here where they went on. And they went over. And they too went on. Amen. Amen. In other words, no matter how many opportunities were given, Elijah didn't quit. Amen. He didn't stop. Okay? Now, let me talk about those places for just a minute. Gilgal. They started out in Gilgal. That's in verse 1. Now, names have meaning. I'll help you on this. Use a little humor. My brother Gary back there will appreciate this. In, in some of those books of names... Okay, where it gives you the uh, meaning of names. You get some of them older books, uh, and, and when you come to the name Gary, it's an old name. Gary's an old name. It was common when we were young, but it's an old, it, nobody calls their kid Gary now, okay? But Gary, in, in some of them books, you, you'll know this just by looking at us, you know, him and I. I mean, you'll know this right off, okay? Yeah, Gary means brave warrior. Brave warrior. Now, you knew that just from yeah. us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Humor helps. Okay. So names have meaning. Gilgal, the name Gilgal, it, it, it simply means a rolling. The word itself means a rolling. L-O, I mean, R-O-L-L-I-N-G, rolling. Okay. Now, we, we first learn about Gilgal from the book of Joshua. In Joshua chapter 5, it's where uh, the, uh, that generation that had disobeyed God and rebelled against God died off in the wilderness, okay, in the 40 years. And Moses is passed off the scene. And Joshua is now leading the children of Israel into the promised land. And they come to Gilgal. And, the, and I'm going to pick my words because I don't want to offend anybody, okay. When they come to Gilgal... And you that are of age know what I'm saying. That the Lord instructed Joshua to take sharp knives and to circumcise all the men. Okay. Now, the cutting away of the flesh, it was a representation here in Joshua 5 of the rolling away of the reproach of Egypt. Where did they come from? They came up, they came up out of Egypt. Okay, a type of the world. So they had to come to Gilgal. Gilgal was the place of God's purging where the reproach of Egypt was rolled away. Okay? Now, after we're saved, after we're saved, if we're going to be used of God, we've got to come to a Gilgal in our life. Amen. Uh, you, can't, you can't walk two lives. Amen. You, you have to come to a place where you're going to live for God. Amen? You begin talking about living for God or separating unto the Lord in a Baptist church and you just about feel folks cringe. There he goes again. Amen. But uh, this thing of separating unto the Lord is not, a, is not rules and regulations. It's not do's and don'ts. Amen. I'll, I'll give you an illustration. Again, not trying to offend anybody. But... Uh, it's not that I don't do this and I don't do that and I don't go there, okay? Because there's, there's good moral, I mean, there's none good, but you know what I'm talking about in society. There's moral people that they've never done that and they've never done that and they've never gone there. But they, they're, not, they're not purging anything. They're lost. You, you understand? Okay? Um. Uh, Mormons, Mormons, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints. 
Mormons. Uh, you're not even supposed to drink coffee. I mean, good night. You know, that's, that's not purging. That's, <laughs> I mean, we're not hooked on anything. But <laughs> you get my thought? Yeah. You know, so many folks, uh, when you start talking about I don't do this, and I don't, that's Phariseeism. Amen. That's what the Pharisees did. Wore their phylacteries, look at me. Okay, all right. So this place of purging is you want to move on for the Lord, but you don't want to be burdened down with what you had out there in Egypt. Yeah. So you come to a place where you determine, hey, you need less of Egypt and more of him. Amen. And things are purged away. Okay. Yeah. Then you, the second place they come to is Bethel. Right? They started in, in Gilgal, and then they come to Bethel. Now, as Beth, uh, uh, Gilgal was God's person, Bethel is the place of God's presence. We learn about Bethel from Jacob, you know, how that he had robbed Esau of, the, uh, of his birthright, and then the blessing with his mother's help, the ble blessing of the firstborn. And uh, Esau's mad enough to kill him. I, I often say uh, Jacob could write a book on how to make friends. Yeah, amen. <laughs> okay? But his mother says, we need to send him off to my homeland to fetch a bride. So uh, Isaac and Rebekah, they, they load him up and send him off. And nightfall sets in. In Genesis chapter 28, it's where he's on his way to his mother's homeland. It's where... Uh, Jacob makes a pillow out of a stone and he sees the angels ascending and descending upon the ladder and, and he goes fast asleep and he wakes up out of the sleep and he says, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew it not. Okay? So it's where the Lord made himself real to Jacob. Amen. Okay? It's, if I can use another illustration like of Paul, where Paul writes to the church at Philippi in Philippians 3, in verse 10, he says that I, might, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Amen. My point is, Paul knew the Lord. Paul was saved. Yep. Uh, you know, Paul was born again. Paul, I mean, Paul was that giant of, 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 of men, amen, spiritually. But his desire was, not just to be saved, he wanted God to be real. Amen. He, want, he, want, he wanted to know God, okay? And then they, they leave Bethel and they come to Jericho. Now, Jericho is a place of past victories. We, we've got God's purging, we've got God's presence, and now we've got the past victories. Uh, it was the first of the cities that God would give them. We talked about that with Rahab how they marched around one time every day for six days and seventh day marched around seven times and they blew the trumpets and the walls came tumbling down, okay? God gave them the city in a unique way. Uh, you know, uh, God had given them great victories. I could see those, you know, that uh, they saw the walls come tumbling down and they'd tell those generations that would follow. Well, I was there <laughs> when the walls came tumbling down. But see, God's not interested in just what you've done. It's what you're doing. He's Amen. not just the God of the past. Amen. Amen. See, I, I emphasize that one for this reason. I, I've heard all the stories about the glory days of Brother Poole and the big numbers and the big meetings, yeah. okay? But that's, that's gone. That's, right. that, that's not now. Uh, I believe the best days are still ahead for Priceville. Amen. Amen. Okay. You, you can't live in those glory days. You've got to live in the now. Okay. And then uh, the next place they come to is Jordan's waters. Yeah. And Jordan's waters are flood level. Okay. I'm headed somewhere in this. All right. I, I, I'll get back to those waters in a minute. But I'm talking about don't quit. Amen. I'm talking about no stopping place. Okay, here. Now, Elisha says, tarry ye here. Elijah says to Elisha, tarry ye here. And Elisha says, no, I'm going on. Now, had Elisha stopped there at Gilgal 
Everybody would have said, what a fine young man. Boy, boy, there, there's, boy there's an example of a fine young man. Okay, you getting my thought? But he didn't want to stop just being a fine young man. So they get to Bethel. And again, Elijah says, Terry here. And Elijah says, no, I'm going on. But if he had chose to stop there, then he said, boy, he's a fine young man and he really knows God. Amen. Okay? But he says, I'm going on. And they come to Jericho. If he had stopped at Jericho, uh, everybody would have thought about him. Boy, he's a fine young man who knows God and God's used him. You getting all my thoughts here? But he says, no, I'm going on. And they come to Jordan. Now, here's, here's where I'm coming back to Jordan. They got to the Gilgal in their own power. They walked in their own strength to Bethel. Proceeded on again in their power to Jericho. But now when they get to Jordan, it's going to take much more than what they can do. That's right. It would take the power of God, the place of purging, the place of God's presence, the place of past victories, yeah. but here's the place of God's power. Yeah. If, they'd, if he'd have stopped anywhere along there, He'd, he'd have never seen God's power. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My point is, God's going to show himself big in Priceville. Amen. You, I, I mean, as many accolades as could be given to you, you don't want to stop back there. Amen. You want to see what God's going to do now. Yeah. You want to see the power of God fall now. And to do that, there's no stopping place. There's no quitting place. Right. You've got to pick them up and put them down and press forward and Amen. continue on. Amen. Well, you know that God parted those waters. Yep. And when they got over on the other side, and Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do unto thee. Amen. Elijah didn't say, You know, I could use a new escalator. He didn't say, you know, we could use a bigger house. He said, no, I want a double portion of what I've seen God use you to do. Amen. And that's what revival ought to lead us to. Amen. Is that, hey, we don't want to stop at any of those places, no matter how many accolades we could be given, no matter what kind of testimony folks would think we'd had, Hey, we want, we want to see God's power. Amen. We want to see God continue to move. Yeah. We want to continue to see God do work. And sure enough, after, after Elijah was caught up and that mantle fell to Elisha, Amen. he got back to those same waters and they'd closed back up there at flood level. And he cries out, where is the Lord God of Elijah and he was right there for Elisha, like, just like he'd been there for Elijah. I, I'm telling you, you, the best is yet to come. You, you haven't seen the end of it yet. Hey, there's no telling what God's going to do, but you just can't quit. You can't stop. You've got to press on. That's right, brother. Amen. That's good. Now, that's all introduction. Amen. Okay. I'm going to give you five reasons not to quit. Amen. Five reasons not to stop. The pressure is going to be on. Yeah. If you've gotten what you said you've gotten this week, and God's really done a work, the pressure is going to be on. Amen. Okay, all right, amen. The first reason is simply this. Uh, there's, there's no place to stop. Why? Because there is still a hell to warn about. Hell is a real place. That's right. Hell is as real as Priceville, Alabama. Yeah. Boy, I hear folks mock hell and laugh at hell. Yeah, that's true. I hear them say, 
well, if I go to hell, all my friends will be there. You will have no friends in hell. Amen. Uh, there in Luke 16, yeah. that's not a parable. Amen. That's a reality. Yeah. There was a man named Lazarus. There was a rich man. Amen. This beggar man did sit at the rich man's gates, begging alms. Amen. Right. Hey, the rich man despised uh, Lazarus. Lazarus died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The, the price had not been paid. There was a right. compartment of, of, of uh, paradise and a compartment of torments in, in the heart of the earth. Yeah. It's where after Jesus paid the price, he led captivity captive Amen. so that when you die in the Lord now, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Amen. There's no paradise in the heart of the earth, but there was paradise at that time. Right after Lazarus is carried up by the angels to Abraham's bosom, the next verse says, And the rich man died also, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and he seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. Amen. We make much of the drop of water, but what he's begging for is mercy. There's no mercy after death. There's no second opportunities. You die in your sin. You go directly to this place called hell. There's no purgatory. Amen. Nobody can pray you out. Nobody can buy you out. Amen. You die lost, you go to hell. Amen. It's a literal place, an existing place. Uh, it's an everlasting place. Uh, it's a wicked place. The worst part about this account in Luke 16 is that rich man is still there in the fire, still there falling, still there in the darkness, Amen. still longing for a drop of water, still crying out for mercy, and there's no mercy to be had. Amen. But he begins to pray in hell. It's too late to pray. That's right. That's too late. He said, I have five brethren. Send somebody to my father's house. I've got five brethren. Here's my thought on that. He led his brothers down the wrong path. And if they died because of his example and came to that same place, they would curse him if they could. Amen. If they could see him, if they could recognize him in hell, they'd curse him for leading them down a the wrong path. That's right. Hey, there's a hell to warn about. Amen. Don't quit now. Don't quit now. When they ride up and down here, oh, you, all you've got is a sign out on the highway, but I dare say a lot of people know this place is back here. Yeah. Oh, if this place shut down, who's going to tell Priceville? Yeah. Who's going to tell Morgan County? Who's going who's gonna to be the lighthouse on the hillside? Amen. Who's going to warn them? Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Amen. Uh, the morning we got saved, that old preacher preached it's in hell. But he turned it around. And he said, the way of the cross leads home. Amen. You don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to go to hell. Amen. Jesus paid your price. You can't quit now. Still a, there's still a hell to warn about. Amen. You can't quit now because there's still a hope to believe in. Amen. Boy, this world, this world is oppressing. Yeah. I, I mean, all the current events and what's going on would be easily, you could easily slip off into disheartenment and discouragement. The circumstances of the day the things you have to face on a daily routine. Amen. Hey, 
but don't let it get you down. There's still a hope to believe in. Amen. Hey, hey, the, the better days are ahead. Hey, Amen. Right. What, 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 what kind of hope do we have, preacher? Well, my hope is in the, is in the Savior. Amen. Amen. What's the old hymn? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He's my conquering hero. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Hey, as the Spirit of God raised him up, hey, I know one day if I die by means of the grave, I'll be raised up. Hey, I've got a lot of hope in my Savior. I'm on the winning side. Hey, my best days are ahead. Amen. Amen. But then also, my hope's in the Scriptures. Amen. If all you read was a newspaper or looked online at what's happening in the world, boy, you'd lose it pretty quick. Amen. But if you'll get in, get in this book, put your nose in this book, uh, open up these pages, hey, you'll find out that all that was already predicted by the Word of God. And we already know the outcome of everything. Amen. It brings us back to the fact that we've got a lot of hope. Our hope's in the scriptures. Yeah. But then also, my hope is in the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, Jesus is coming. He the darker it gets, the darker it gets, the closer we are to dawn. Hey, man, isn't that, isn't that the saying? Yeah. It's always darkest before the dawn. Hey, Jesus is coming. One of these mornings, he's going to step out on a cloud. We're going to hear the trumpet sound. Yeah, We're going to hear him say, come up hither. And in a moment, the twinkle of an eye. Hey, we're getting up out of here. Yeah, hey, yeah. we've got a lot to, a lot to hope in. Hey, Amen. Yeah, no place to quit. No time to stop. There's still a hell to warn about, a hope to believe in. There's still an honor to uphold. Yeah. Amen. You quit, you quit. And as they drive by and the sign's taken down and the buildings are all dark and the grasses grow 10 feet tall and, uh, I mean, everything's in disarray, yeah. they'll say, I knew there wasn't nothing to it. I knew it wasn't real. You know, that was the biggest thing with David. When he sinned with Bathsheba, as grievous as that was, the worst part of it was that he gave the heathen nations cause to blaspheme his God. That's true. You quit now. You let down. The, yeah, you don't uphold the honor. Hey, you'll give every lost person you've ever met reason to say, I knew it wasn't real. Amen. There's an honor to uphold. Amen. You think of some in the Bible. You think about those three Hebrew children. I, I mean, they wouldn't go the king's way. They wouldn't eat the king's meat. They wouldn't Amen. drink the king's wine. Daniel and them three boys purposed in their heart to live for God. In Daniel chapter 3, the king made that image and everybody was to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar when they heard that rock music blowing. And they said, all about uh, bow down to that king. And those boys said, oh, king, we're not bending, we're not bowing. The king said, heat up the furnace. And they said, do what you will, oh, king. We're not going to bend, we're not going to bow. Our God shall deliver us. And if not, so what? Amen. 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 Hey, we've got an honor to uphold. <laughs> you, 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 th you think about, we, we talked about David and, and, and uh, yeah, my mind went blank. Oh, uh, Uriah. Uriah. Uriah was such a man of character. Certainly was. When David brought him home uh, to cover up his sin, Uriah said, can't go home with, Joab and the men out there on the battlefield. Amen. I can't go home. He had an honor to uphold. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, we've got an honor to uphold. Amen. 
Amen. No time to quit. No place to stop. Why is that, preacher? There's a church house to maintain. Amen. Hey, this thing's not over. Don't board up the windows yet. Amen. Amen. Hey, there's a church house to maintain. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I can remember times, and, and you, you have to go so far back, but nobody locked the church house. Everybody respected the church house. Old sinners, if they, uh, you know, the old sot, the town drunk, he, he wouldn't walk in front of the church. He, he'd go around the block rather than to walk by the church as an old sot. Nowadays, it's not that way. They don't respect the church house. Now, I know there's nothing holy about the building. It's only holy when we're assembled here because the holy God meets with us. Hey, man, okay? But my point is, hey, I, I, there's church buildings being turned into everything and anything. It'd be a shame for the devil to get this property before we're taken out of here. Yeah. Amen. Well, you need to hold it up. Amen. Keep it in good repair. Keep the grass cut. Amen. Uh, hey, uh, so that when lost sinners come, they'll know, hey, those folks, they care about that place. Amen. 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 No stopping place. That's right. No quitting place. I hear somebody say, well, I really can't do much. You can do a whole lot more than you think you can. That's right. Amen. Amen. If, if, you, if nothing else, you, you could pray. You could pray for the work of God. Amen. Maybe you can't get up on a ladder anymore. Maybe, maybe there's other things you can't do. Uh, hey, hey, but you can hold this place up in prayer. Uh, God put your blessings here. Continue to use our man of God. God send in visitors. Amen. No, no place to quit. No place to quit. Amen. I'll give you this last thought and I'm done. What's that, preacher? No time to quit. There's still an heritage to pass on. Amen. There's a heritage to pass on. Remember Naboth? Yeah. Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. Prime. Naboth had prime vineyard. Everybody wanted Naboth's vineyard. Ahab won Naboth's vineyard. Ahab said, name your prize. I'll swap you whatever you want. I want your vineyard. Uh, I'll give you whatever money. I, I want your vineyard. Yeah. And Naboth said, God forbid, the Lord forbid, that I should give unto you the Lord's heritage. Amen. That's all he had to pass on to his children. Amen. He... He, he wouldn't sell his heritage, wouldn't give his heritage away. He says, I'm not for sale, not for sale. It's all I've got to pass on. Amen. Amen. Right. Can I get plain for a minute? What's going to happen to your grandchildren if you sell out? That's right. if, you, if you throw in the towel? What's going to happen to that teenage girl if you quit now? You say, well, we really can't give her everything she needs. But what she needs is a goodly heritage. Amen. If you can pass on a goodly heritage, you passed on more than you could have if you, if you could have bought her a new Escalade. Yeah. Amen. Brother, what's going to happen to your family? You sell out now. Yeah. You, you that are my age, what's going to happen to your family? You quit now. Amen. Hey, there's no stopping place. You've got something of rare value that you can pass on. It's called a goodly heritage. Amen. It's what, how God's blessed you. you. Hey, when my time comes, and if I don't go out in the rapture, uh, Brent Logan's going to preach my funeral. They're going to lay me out in a casket at the church house. Hey, I want to be buried from the church house. They're going to have the funeral at the at the church house, they're going to carry me up the hill down from where we're at. 
there on State Line Road and put that body in the grave. But as they, as they walk by that casket, my grandchildren come by and my children come by. Hey, I want them to know that I held the course. I, I, I finished my, my course, amen. I didn't quit on God. Amen. 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 There's too much at stake. Really I'm telling you, the pressure's going to be on. You say, we've had a great meeting. The devil's going to kick them props. He certainly will. That's He's going to try and get you to quit. Yeah. But there's no place to stop. Amen. No stopping place. Amen. A notable miracle has taken place. Right. We need to pick it up and run with it. Amen. No stopping place. Amen. No stopping place. Let's stand. Here's the invitation. If you're here and you've never been saved, you die like you are. You die in your sin. As the sister comes to the pen, you'll go to that place called hell. You, that's where you'll end up. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter how long you've lived. Doesn't matter what you've done. You die like you are, you'll end up in that place called hell. But here's the second part. Every one of us ought to beg God, help me, God, that I don't quit. God, put something in me that I finish my course. And let me be like Paul there in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8. Hey, help me to finish my course, to fight my fight, to run my race. But I don't quit on God. Father, I've done my best to mind you. Pray to help us as our sister begins to play. Pray to speak to hearts and draw the sinner. Help them to see the only hope they have is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid their sin debt. He paid it in full. He's more interested in them than they are in themselves. Oh, please trouble the waters in their life that they might come tonight. Get in before it's too late. I ask for Priceville Baptist Church. I pray they lift the banner high. I pray they'd run with it long and hard. God, you continue to keep your hand upon the work. Lord, I believe their best days are ahead. Help them to grab hold of them and run with them. I pray your best upon the church. Help now in this invitation. Have your perfect will, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Preacher's on the altar. Won't you come join him?